is dedicated to our Blessed Mother Mary. In today's feature, we will take a look at the importance of Marian consecration. Hello, with this week's feature story, I am Tessa Habet. Our feature story is brought to you by Pink Boutique. Get ready for summer 2021 with Pink Boutique, where you can get a variety of items from toys and children's clothes to graduation dresses, shoes, blouses, handbags, swimsuits, and jewelry for the grown and sophisticated. Whether you're going to the Keys for a relaxing day on the beach or having dinner at a fancy restaurant, Pink Boutique has got you covered. Pink Boutique is located at two and a half miles on the Philip Golson Highway. You can keep up with promotions and sales on their Facebook or Instagram pages at Pink Boutique Belize or call at 223-1552. Pink Boutique is a proud sponsor of Beyond Basic and Guadalupe Media. for our own mothers has given us his mother as our own. So in imitation of Christ, we also love and honor our Heavenly Mother Mary. The month of May is dedicated as the month of the Blessed Mother, and one way we can honor Mary during this month and throughout the year is by practicing the Church's tradition of consecrating oneself to Jesus through the Blessed Virgin Mary. Marian consecration is a very old devotion and there were a lot of holy church fathers and also saints that followed this path to Jesus. Saint Louis de Montfort collected a devotion, the devotions to Mary from the great saints like Saint Dominic and Saint Bonaventure and he included these devotions from the ancient saints in his own writing, specifically his treatise it was titled True Devotion to Mary that he wrote himself in the year, I think, 1712. Now, about 200 years later, after St. Louis de Montfort wrote his treatise, Our Lady in Fatima, Our Lady of Fatima, confirmed this when she appeared to the, the shepherd children in Portugal, in Fatima, by inviting all of us to consecrate ourselves to her Immaculate Heart, inviting us to consecrate our nations and the world to her Immaculate Heart. So it's clear that Our Lady wants her children to consecrate themselves to her. Now, True Devotion to Mary, that's the title of St. Louis de Montfort's book, had a really profound impact on millions of people in history, including many popes. But I want to highlight especially one pope, St. John Paul II. He was personally consecrated to Mary from, like, I think from when he was a teenager. And also he consecrated his pontificate to Our Lady. Totos, totos tuos, which means in Latin, totally yours, was his papal motto. And if you look at his motto, it's a cross with an M. It's like Mary at the foot of the cross. And so St. John Paul II saw consecration to Mary as the surest, easiest, and surest way to come close to Jesus Christ and become Christ-like. And he himself said, John Paul II, that she protected him when he was, when they tried to assassinate him on May 13th, 1981. He personally said that he owes his life to his consecration to Mary, that her hand protected him. And after he came out of the hospital, he went the following year, 1982, to Fatima, and he placed the bullet in her crown. If you go today to Fatima, you'll see the bullet in her crown, Our Lady of Fatima. So she protected him, and she'll protect you. Marian consecration is the act of entrusting one's body, soul, possessions, works, and entire life to the protection, guidance, and intercession of Our Lady. Marian consecration basically means giving Mary our full permission, or as much permission as we can, to complete her motherly task in us, which is to form us into 
other Christ. Do you hear that? To form us into other Christ. That baffles me, blows my mind. Thus, by consecrating ourselves to Mary, each of us is basically saying to her, Mary, I want to be a saint. I know that you also want me to be a saint and that it's your God-given mission to form me into one. So Mary, at this moment, on this day, I freely choose to give you my full permission to do your work in me with your spouse, the Holy Spirit. The Virgin Mary moves hearts. She does. She certainly moved my heart. Consecration to Mary is one of the best things that you can do for your spiritual life. It was one of the best things. It's like my life, like sky, my spiritual life, like skyrocketed, you know, because I knew she was, there was power behind her prayers in my life. And the essence of Mary and consecration I found in my own life is that it helps you to become another Mary to Jesus. That's it. You become like another Mary to Jesus, a faithful, a loving, and a trusting companion of our Savior. She was the best disciple of Jesus, and we can become the best disciple of Jesus. It's like we become another Mary to Jesus. So consecration to the Immaculate Heart, to Our Lady, is, I would say, the more perfect, the more easy, and the safest path to be Christ-like. So when I was born, a typical Catholic tradition was that you consecrate your children to Mary. And there were eight in my family, six boys, two girls. But we were all consecrated to Mary. So I figured what would happen is we would went to church, in this case, Holy Redeemer, were baptized, and then afterwards, I'm sure, the priest or bishop, whoever baptized us, walked over with my parents to the statue of Mary and said a prayer where we were consecrated to Mary. With that, another tradition was that we wore blue and white for seven years. Now, I can't recall wearing blue and white, but I do know we did. And my mother told us we did. Boys and girls alike, we all wore blue and white. It never affected me. I still love blue to this day. And my closet, quite a big, big part of my closet, has blue outfits in it. So there we go. So in my family, we had statues of Mary. We were a devout Catholic family, church on Sunday. We prayed the rosary as a family. At school, we had a month of Mary. We had crowning of Mary like during the month of May. So all of that was part of our my ritual. I first heard about Mary consecration when I was in second form. Uh, it was introduced to me by a friend, and um, I didn't know anything about it. But um, as I prepared to get consecrated, I learned, uh, I guess, all the basics and just like a lot about it um, through the book "33 Days to Morning Glory" by Father Michael Gately. And um, I was. At that time, I was um, just starting to get into my faith, even though I had grown up Catholic, but I um, didn't really have a relationship with God. And when I when I got consecrated, I um, I learned so much about Our Lady and her role in salvation history, and um, and and that, and just. Um, yeah, how much importance God placed in her and um, how she like had been, is uh, was given to us as a mother, right, um, in Calvary. And so I, I was able to learn how, um, how she can bring us closer to her son. And um, something that I really like about consecration is that, um, when, like, when you think about it, Mary was like the one person that was the closest to Jesus, and during his life, and even now that they're in heaven. And so, what other 
better person to go to than to marry, right? And um, and yeah, some so this other big thing about consecration is entrustment to marry, uh, which is a really big thing that um, we shouldn't take lightly because um, with her important role in salvation history, like she, her role didn't end when Jesus died or when she died. Her her role in salvation um, kind of like began, not began, but like took a different shape, I guess, after the death of Jesus. And, um, and so she like, has a, she plays a big part in like our souls getting getting to heaven after Jesus dies right now. Um, so I guess during like my hardest times, interesting myself to her has been a really big part of um, yeah, just like big steps and like wherever God calls me, um, I always I always think of interesting my myself and like any plans or dreams that I that I might have to her and um, and yeah knowing just how, how close she was to her son I know she can still bring my my worries my fears my dreams everything to to Jesus the act of entrusting oneself to Jesus through Mary is nothing new Jesus himself entrusted his beloved disciple John to Mary while he was on the cross. The early Christians and church fathers recognized Mary's holiness and her significance as the mother of God. We've been asking for Mary's intercession and intervention in our lives since the beginning of the church. She is, after all, our mother too. Her prayers are powerful. Her prayers can help mold, guide, purify, and like I said, defend your soul and bring you also closer to God's embrace. Let me share a little mystical experience that I had in last year's retreat. Every year as priests, we do a retreat. And last year I did an eight day retreat with, it's called the Spiritual Exercises of St. Ignatius. And about the middle of the retreat, I remember that I was praying before an icon of Jesus, and Jesus asked me in my prayer to go to Our Lady. And so I physically moved to another seat where there was an icon of our Mary with baby Jesus in her. And immediately in my prayer, I saw myself in her arms. It's like I was a little baby in her arms. And Jesus said, if you wanna be enter the kingdom of God, you have to be like a child. So I was like a child in her arms. But I was like a little bit of a brat because I wanted to, I wanted to go to the father's arms, and I don't know if you've, I went like this to the father. I felt in my prayer that I went like this, like I didn't want to be in our lady's hand, and I went like this to the father in my prayer, and he didn't receive me, and I was like, whoa, why? It's like I thought God's lovers, he didn't receive me, and so our lady said, no, she, he wants you to stay with me. But I understood the next day why he didn't receive me. Because I, that I had, I, I, the Father showed me that I had disrespected Mary. That when you, when you are in her arms, you, you don't disrespect her. Like a little kid who doesn't want to be in this person's arms, it feels like he wants to go to another arms. You don't do that to Our Lady. And so the Father was very clear to me. You ask Our Lady to bring me Ask her to bring me to his arms. Ask her, don't like just do it because that disrespects her. So he's very sense, God our Father is very sensitive never to disrespect Our Lady, to honor her. And so I did the next day. It was a Saturday morning, I remember it clearly. It was a Sabbath, Saturday morning. And in that prayer, I asked Our Lady, Mother, I'm sorry if I disrespected you, but could you take me to the Father's embrace, to his arms? And immediately, I remember I saw this light, just pure light in my prayer. And I experienced like the Father's embrace. And my spiritual director asked me, he was checking to see if it was authentic. And the way I knew it was like an authentic like experience with God, the Father, is because he asked me, did you desire anything when you were in his arms? And I said, and I reflected, I said, no. 
And I understood that in, when you're in the Father's embrace, you, you desire nothing because you have everything. You have peace. You have joy. I mean, you, you long for nothing. You, you have everything in His He's the goal. The Father's embrace is, we we're created for that. And so when I experienced that, it was so beautiful. And you know what? It came through Our Lady. It was she, God the Father taught me, Jesus is the one who asked me to go to Our Lady. And she's the one who brought me to the Father's embrace like a child. It's like when we approach the Father, we approach as children. That is like some arrogant or brat. You won't, it's like you, you won't get in. You won't get into his embrace. It's like you have to be a true child of the Father and come with humility and purity and goodness, never disrespecting the Holy, the Holy Family. And then he'll receive you, and it's amazing. When we consecrate ourselves to Mary, really we are consecrating ourselves to Jesus through Mary. They are so intimately united that truly giving ourselves to Mary can lead to nothing but total surrender to God. I do retreats, and usually when I do these retreats, I'll ask some of the girls, who wants to be holy? And a few of them raise their hands. And then I ask, who wants to be a saint? And no one raises their hand, or maybe one or two. Then I ask the third question, who wants to go to heaven? And every hand shoots up. And I have to give a big laugh because I then explain that only holy saints live in heaven. And that's what this consecration is all about. We come to realize that Jesus, Mary had two big missions. Her first mission, of course, was the birth and caring, carrying, caring, nurturing of Jesus, her beautiful divine son. But she was given another mission, and that mission was to call us to her, to bring us Christians, to welcome us, and to lead us on the road to becoming saints. So that's what Mary's role in consecration to Mary does. She's asking us to, be, to follow her son. She's taking us to her son, but we're going through her. And like it said, it's the quickest, surest, and easiest way to get to Jesus. Now, what if you already have a devotion to Mary, pray the rosary, and ask for her intercession? Why should you take the extra step to consecrate yourself to Mary? Consecration to Mary is simply a furthering and deepening of our devotion to and relationship with Jesus through Our Lady. If you already have an affection for Mary and talk to her often, consecration is a natural next step. But even if you don't really know Our Lady yet and aren't convinced of the hype, Marian consecration can be that bridge that unites you to her more deeply. After devotion to the Eucharist and the heart of Jesus, devotion to Mary is the greatest devotion in the church and can't be compared to other devotions in the church because we honor, because the honor we owe to our Blessed Mother is above the other saints. In other words, we owe her some honor. Okay, now let me make a distinction here. Mary was inspired by the Holy Spirit and when she said in Luke chapter 1 verse 48, all generations will call me blessed. This is what she herself said, inspired by the Holy Spirit in, in, in the Gospels. All generations will call me blessed. Well, why? Why will all generations call her blessed? It's because she was a blessing to all generations. All generations will call her blessed is because she was a blessing to all generations, including our generation. Why? Because her yes had a universal effect. Her yes to God was changing to every generation. Because of her yes, we have Jesus with us today. She could have said no to, to the angel and said, no, I got a better plan or, you know, but she said yes. You know? And so that changed everything. And so in the church, we, 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 we define as devotion to God as in Latin, it's called latria. Latria means adoration or worship 
or the virtue that is part of the virtue of religion that only can be shown to God. We can't adore anybody else or worship anybody. It's only God. That's Latria. That's what's due him, owed to him. But there's another word that we use in Latin, the catechism, it's called dulia. And that means it's like a relationship of service, of, of someone who is superior, of respect. That's dulia. And that's what we owe like the saints and just people of authority in our lives. We owe them dulia, like your boss or, the, you know, the prime minister or people or the Supreme Court. Or we owe respect. That's due respect. That's dulia. That would be... But in the Catechism, it says with Our Lady, we owe her hyperdulia. It means we owe her a, like a veneration above. Why? Because, because the Blessed Virgin Mary, without her free, her yes at the Incarnation, the redemption would not have occurred. And so she is blessed. All generations will call her blessed because she blessed all generations by her yes. And so her yes had a universal effect. It had, it, it, her, the redemption that came from her, yes, and then ultimately Jesus, the incarnation, benefited everyone. I mean, it literally benefited everyone. We're giving Mary permission to have all of us, to give ourselves totally to her, to make us into saints, to make us into other Christs. I remember reading that um. JP2 said that um, it was a turning point in his life, um, consecrating himself to Mary. And I remember reading that and thinking, like it must have been really like a big event in his life to have consecrated for him to say that. And um, I remember like that inspired me and like made me want to do it even more. Um, because I was like, I want to experience that too, you know, <laughs> like if he, and like, he's also someone that I really admire. And so for him to say that, I was like, I really took it to heart. And I was like, I need to, I need to like, look into this and see for myself. When we consecrate ourselves to Mary, we give her our entire lives and selves, as well as the merits of all our prayers and works in order to belong more fully to our Lord. We give Mary everything we are and do to present to the Lord and use at her disposal. Why should we give Mary everything, you may ask? Mary takes all these prayers, graces, virtues, any sufferings we've had, and she multiplies it. She takes, she does this through her, her loving generosity. See, Mary's generosity cannot be out, outdone. So she does this through her generosity. And this is what she does. So when I learned the following day that we don't have to fear, even if she takes those prayers, she knows exactly who needs that prayer. And she may use our prayer for that person. But because she has multiplied our graces, believe me, she knows exactly when our family and our friends need prayer also. That became so consoling because I have kids living abroad. I have my grandchildren now abroad. So I don't know when they're in any situation, but she does. And the prayers I might have prayed that was used for someone, someone else's prayer may be used for my children. That was so comforting to learn that. Not only do we totally give ourselves to her, St. Louis, St. Louis de Montfort says that she totally gives herself to us. We consecrate ourselves to her, but she consecrates herself to us. And then Mary becomes like our lawyer, a good one. She's a powerful lawyer. And she begins to beautify us by how? By asking the Holy Spirit to share with us her primary virtues. And according to St. Louis de Montfort, in Article 108 of her, true devotion to Mary, he states 10 virtues that the Holy Spirit begins to form in us because of her, because she asked the Holy Spirit to do that. And so the first virtue is deep humility. You'll grow in deep humility. The second virtue of Mary is a living faith. 
The third virtue is perfect obedience. The fourth virtue of Mary is continuous prayer. She was praying always, literally. The fifth virtue is universal mortification or penance. The, the sixth virtue of Our Lady is divine purity. The seventh virtue of Our Lady is burning love, burning charity, just a burning passion of love for God. The eighth virtue is heroic patience. Not about you, but I could use some heroic patience. The ninth virtue of Mary is angelic sweetness. I need to be a little sweeter, a little kinder, I would say. I'm working on that. But she, her virtue was perfect. She, was angel, she had an angelic sweetness. And then the tenth and final virtue in Our Lady that she is divine wisdom. And so we can ask Our Lady, when she, we give ourselves to her, she gives herself to us. And she begins to firm her, her, herself, these virtues in us, by asking, she asks the Holy Spirit to, to grow these in us. So remember, the essence of Marian consecration is to help you become another Mary for Jesus. And so when the Holy Spirit begins to form these virtues in you, you literally become another Mary to Jesus, transformed by the Holy Spirit in all these virtues. And so the Holy Spirit will begin to transform you in all these virtues that make you more like another Mary. And it's a beautiful one. It really brings us to holiness. And, and so, and, and it gives, it literally gives Mary the freedom to act freely in preparing your soul for God. In preparing your soul to be a better disciple of Jesus, preparing yourself for that in, in for that embrace of the Father's love in heaven, and, and just preparing your soul to to respond to the Holy Spirit, to be a true temple of the Holy Spirit as she herself was, and and so I pray that each of you may really consecrate yourself to Our Lady and do the full thirty three day preparations, and, and that you live out that consecration daily in your life with great joy. Now that we know why Marian consecration is so important for our journey to holiness, the question is, how do I complete a Marian consecration and what do I need? To complete a Marian consecration, you really just need a willing heart. Just to begin with a desire to know Jesus more deeply through his mother, you will probably also want a guide. St. Louis de Montfort's true devotion to Mary is timeless and has been used for decades. This method has been praised and promoted by many popes for the past two centuries. Pope Pius IX declared that St. Louis de Montfort's devotion to Mary was the best and most acceptable form of devotion to Our Lady. St. Maximilian Kolbe's nine-day formal consecration to Mary is also beloved by many. In more recent years, Father Michael Gately wrote 33 Days to Morning Glory, which focuses on the Marian spiritualities of four saints. This guide has become increasingly popular in the past few years and is a very comprehensible and user-friendly guide to consecrating oneself to Jesus through Mary. In the words of the father of the true devotion to Jesus through Mary, St. Louis de Montfort, there is no surer road to Jesus than the one through Mary. And that's our story. Thanks for watching. For this and more feature stories, you can follow us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, or view on Guadalupe Media channel 96 on CCV or channel 64 on CBC. You can also tune in on the radio in your car, home or office at 101.9 FM and please be sure to download the Guadalupe Media radio app from Google Play or the App Store. Our Blessed Mother, lead us to Jesus. 